Hey, Write Writers, Keith Wheeler here, back with another video for you. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a Sudoku puzzle using PowerPoint. You heard that right. Maybe you can't quite afford a Sudoku making puzzle software quite yet, or if you're like me, you prefer making puzzles from scratch from time to time. In either case, if you're excited to be getting another puzzle book tutorial, well, let me know by giving that thumbs up a smashy smashy. And if you're really feeling froggy and super generous, you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now let's start making a Sudoku puzzle. Sorry, wrong snap. Let's just get to PowerPoint. Well, here we are in PowerPoint. I'm just gonna click inside here. I'm gonna hit Control A, which highlights all everything on the inside. And I'm gonna hit the delete button. There we go. So we removed all that. Now I wanna make this in eight by 10. So I'm gonna go into design, slide size, custom slide size, and I'm gonna make it eight inches by 10 inches. Click OK. Ensure fit. Now I'm gonna put in some borders. If you are doing this as a spiral bound, then you don't even need to put in any borders, but I'm going to put some borders in here. I'm gonna do it real quick. I'm just gonna do insert. I'm gonna insert a shape. We'll do a square and draw it in here. And I like mine to be half inch thick. So I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna make it since this is eight by 10, means it's gonna be 10 inches long. And I'm gonna make it 0.5 inches wide. There we go. Control C, Control V. So I've made a copy of it. I'm gonna put it right over here. I'm gonna Control V one more time. So I have a third copy of it. And this one's gonna to go towards the top. So I need to change the height to be 0.5 inches. And now we're gonna make the width the eight inches. I'm gonna drag that into place. Control C, Control V, paste that right down here in the bottom. So now we've got our borders half inch all the way around. So that way we know that we're safe regardless of whether we do a spiral bound or not. So let's get started on creating that Sudoku. So we're gonna do it by inserting a table. Now you can make your Sudoku for kids. And if you make it for kids, then you can do something like a four by four grid I'm gonna do a traditional one, which is nine by nine. So I'm just gonna to go to insert table by nine, click okay. I'm gonna click inside here, I'm gonna hit control A. So I highlight all of the cells that are in here and I wanna to go to shading. I'm gonna remove, so I'm gonna say no fill. I'm gonna to go to the borders for now and just do all borders. I'm gonna lay out and over here is gonna be the size of the entire grid. And over here is gonna be the dimensions of each individual cell. So I want each cell to be about, uh, let's say 0.75 by 0.75. And then I can just click up here and drag it. And that line that's right down the center, if you see that, that shows that it is centered. And if you look, there's one horizontally and that shows that it's centered horizontally. So I'm just gonna leave it right there. Obviously I can move it higher up on the page if I want, but this looks good for now. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna Control A. So again, I highlight everything in here and I'm gonna to go to home and I'm gonna click on center align. And then I'm also gonna go right here, align text, and I'm gonna make it middle aligned. So that way when I put numbers in here, the numbers are gonna be right in the middle of each cell. Now I'm also gonna click in here and I wanna do, we'll do aerial black so they're more bold. So then the next thing we need to do is we need to mess around with these borders because if you've seen a Sudoku puzzle in the past, then you'll know that there are faint lines and darker lines to kind of divide up the different sections. So it's really clear to the user where the, the different grids are, where the different nine, nine by nine sections are. So first thing I wanna do is go in here. I'm gonna to go to table design and we're gonna to go to right here where it says one point. We're gonna start messing around with the font thickness, the width. So this is a one. So we want the fainter lines to be half inch and we'll do that for all the inside. So we'll click over here and we'll do inside borders. Okay, so you see how those went a lot fainter than the ones that we have on the outside. And then we're gonna go in each of these nine by nine and we're gonna up this back up to the original one point and we're just gonna make outside borders. And once we do it that first time, we can just 
there's a little shortcut. If I click just right on this, it'll just redo it. Another shortcut is you can actually hit Control Y for yes, is what it stands for, and it just redoes what you just did. And there we go. So these are the grids that we've got to work with. Now, if these aren't dark enough for you, you can always just go back and, and change the point font you know, from one to maybe two, two and a half, three, whatever you want, whatever the thickness that looks best for you. But these look good for me. So the next thing I wanna do is, since I'm gonna be working in here, I'm gonna view and I'm gonna zoom in a bit. And I'm just gonna put this at 75%. That way it's a little bit bigger, but if I scroll down just a little bit, I can still see the entire grid. So I'll still be able to see the numbers that I'm putting in and making sure that I'm not duplicating anything, okay? so. Here we go. Now we're just gonna go in and start putting in our numbers. Now, what I like to do is I like to work one number at a time. If you've never done a Sudoku or you're not super familiar with them, the rules are very simple. In a nine by nine, which is what we've got here, means we're gonna put in the numbers one through nine and those numbers cannot repeat horizontally, vertically, or within the same th uh, three by three grid. So we really need to as, as you get further along, really pay attention to where you're placing things to make sure that you're not doing any putting in any duplicates. So we're just gonna go in and just start putting in some numbers. Now, the one last thing I need to do before I start is I control A, again, to highlight everything. And I wanna make sure, I click on home, and I wanna make sure that the text that I'm using is black. Sometimes it defaults to white, which is what happened to me. So just wanna make sure that it's black and we're gonna click in here and we're gonna put in a one. There we go. Now, I actually don't like the size of that. I wanna make that a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna control A and let's make this, and this is gonna change depending on the font type that you use. So let's try, let's try 20, see how big that is. Matter of fact, I think I might actually just change this to regular Arial. And this is gonna really change depending on the, um, the feel uh, and the theme of your book, of your, puzzle book that you're doing. So let's just do Times New Roman. Okay, so yeah, now that I've seen that, then we're probably up this just a bit more, maybe 32. Oh yeah, that looks great. Okay, there we go. So for this one, we're gonna do Times New Roman 32 point font. And again, now we're just gonna go in and start throwing in some numbers. So there's one there, which means I cannot have another one in this row in this column or even in this three by three grid right here, which tells me that I can have a one in these cells or these cells. So in this one, in this three by three, let's put one, let's put one right here in the center. And so now that we've got one there, we're gonna do, this last one has to be in one of these three cells. So let's just put it right here. Now I'm gonna work vertically. So I've got one in this column, which means I have to have one in this column and one in this column. Again, especially when you're first starting out, there is no right or wrong, you know, as long as you're staying within the rules. So now that I have this one right here and I've got this one, that means that none of these can be a one. None of these can be a one. So a one can go here, 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 or here. Let's put one there, which now means that in this three by three, can't go in this column, can't go in this column, it can't go in this row. So a one has to be either here or here. Okay, so now if we're working over here, a one cannot go in this column or in this row or in this row, which means it can only be in this cell or this cell. And that tells us exactly where to put it here because it cannot be in this column, in this row, in this row, or in this column. So it has to go right there. And there we go, we did our ones. And now we're just gonna go in through and do the same thing for the twos all the way through our nines. Keeping in mind, as we get closer, as we get further along, it's gonna be harder and harder to, to fit those in. So we're really gonna to need to pay attention to where we place things. And there we go. There is our Sudoku puzzle. Now this is, I wanna set this up as an easy one. So this is our answer right here. So what we wanna do is definitely wanna save this. You probably wanna save it as you go, just in case your computer crashes or your software that you're using. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit, so I'll go to view. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna duplicate the slide. I'm gonna go in here and I wanna remove these borders. So the way to determine whether this is an easy puzzle or a difficult or extremely difficult, whatever terminology you wanna use, is really 
how many clues are you going to leave behind? So how many of these numbers are you still going to leave in the puzzle when they first start out? Now, I want to make this an easy one. And so one of the first things I like to do is leave a row with most of the numbers still in it. Let's just take the second row right here and we'll just delete the first number and maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. That's the only one we'll leave out. So they'll already know that this is a six because it's the only missing number. Now, if you want to make it a little bit more difficult, you can remove, you know, the five as well or whatever. Now, I don't want to make it super easy, so I don't want to leave all of those for, you know, for all the different rows and columns. So I want to highlight these cells right here. I definitely want to clear those out. What else do I want to leave in this cell? Maybe I'll take this one out. Okay, there we go. So this cell right here, I'm going to leave all this information. So then I'm going to go into this next three by three grid. And again, I don't want to make it super easy. So I'm going to delete these. Okay. So now this three by three is done. So again, there's no right or wrong answer. So now we're going to work in this one. Maybe I'll just remove the five. So there we go. So this is going to be their actual puzzle. So maybe up here we'll write like puzzle one or whatever you want to call it. So again, you can drop this down a little bit if you don't want it to be centered. So you've got a little room to, to add some text up there. So this is puzzle one. And then this is the solution to Sudoku puzzle one. And there you go. That's how you create a Sudoku in PowerPoint. Now, be honest, is making a Sudoku easier or harder than you originally thought? Let me know down in the comments. Now, if you're really interested in learning how to make a puzzle book and learn about puzzle book software, puzzle book interiors, and a whole lot more, well, then check out this series right here that I did where I cover everything from DIY interiors to maze generating software. Now, if you've already seen that series, then YouTube says this video right here is perfect for you. Pick one and I'll catch you on the inside. And remember to write right.